Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may, be, may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is a reading from the book of Samuel. All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us, like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but have rejected me from being king over them, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots and he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his fields and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipments of his chariots. He shall take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you on that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel and they said no. But we are determined to have a king over us, 
so that we may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, come, let us go to Gilgal and there renew their kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal and there they made Saul king for the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The second lesson is the reading from the second letter of Paul to the church in Corinth. Just if we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and, we, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasted away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight, momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what we can be seen, what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Ooh, mm-hmm. 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He's gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Belizeal, Bilzebul. See, even priests have trouble with them, just saying. And by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, People will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have been forgiven, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those, he sat around him and he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. the source, the word, and the spirit. Amen. Well, this is a particularly rough uh, scripture for us, this gospel lesson. And I have to tell you, I even struggled with it most of yesterday. Because a lot of people, you know, stressed with the blaspheme of the Holy Spirit. I remember as a kid... Again, waking up in the middle of the night, um, really worried had I blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Did I do it there? Did I, oh my gosh. And, you know, I was going to be condemned to hell because I said something I didn't really mean. And this really, really, really bothered me as a child. And then you grow up and you realize, well, these were things Jesus was trying to tell us and explain his life and meaning and why he was incarnate, why he came to us in human form. So you have the setting this morning where Jesus is gaining notoriety. And he comes to any town and crowds gather. And during that process, he'll break building codes. He'll like have people empty, you know, pull a roof apart and put a paralyzed man down. He has the audacity to heal on the Sabbath. He eats with sinners and tax collectors. He even raises people from the dead he feeds people with two fish and, and a loaf of bread, and he's gaining notoriety. Now, under Emperor Tiberius, in a, an occupied state, this is not a good thing. Crowds are loud. They overflow the Starbucks. You've got to get porta potties. It is a nightmare for people who want the status quo because you don't want to rock the boat. You've got some crazy guy saying he's the son of God. The emperor is God. So you have all the authorities you know, coming out and going, this guy is really going to get us in trouble. So in the meantime, Jesus goes home, 
And what happens? The crowds gather. They hear of the healing. And there's a lot of sickness in this time in Palestine. So the crowds are gathering. And meantime, the scribes are getting really irritated with this guy. And his family hears the rumors. Your son is loco. He's really lost it. He's mental. He thinks he's the son of God. So what every good family does, right? Mom, you know, the mother of God, remember? She, what does she do? She gathers with the family, says, come on, we got to go do an intervention. Our favorite thing to do, right? We got to go pull one of our own out and just try to straighten them up. And Jesus is sitting around the crowd and the, the, one of the persons goes to the door, says, hey, your mom is outside. And he goes, not my mom. This is my mom. This is my brother's. Pretty harsh. But it goes on to explain that the scribes are calling him, the, you know, he's, he's basically possessed with Beelzebub. Beelzebub was a Palestinian word for <laughs> Lord of the Flies. Now, if you've had kids at home with COVID, you probably had that present in your home, Lord, where the kids are taking over your home. So it's basically a very derogatory term. And Jesus basically looks at their logic and just like reflects it back. Take a mirror, people. How can Satan be against Satan? Your logic does not make sense. And he goes on to say, if a strong man, if you really want to take up a strong man, you've got to bind him. Then you can go plunder their home. He's reversing it and saying, I'm basically coming in and binding you. They don't quite get it. But he goes on to explain, look, when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you can blaspheme me, you can do this, you can do that. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, it's like the ultimate sin. What is he talking about? We can get a little reflection of this in the book of Samuel this morning. You know, the liturgists are, you know, they've got, they're trying to make sense here. So we look at Samuel, the first reading this morning that had a back feed that was bothering the heck out of me. But he basically talks about the fact that people came to Samuel, the prophet, and said, we want a king. Every other nation has a king. We want a king. And Samuel goes to God and says, hey, they want a king. And basically God says, well, if they do that, they're not rejecting you, Samuel. They're rejecting me. It's the rejection aspect. God goes on to say what will happen if they have a king. The king will take your sons and put them into war. He'll take the best of your crops, the best of your orchards, the best of your vineyards. He's going to take your, your daughters. He's going to take 10% of everything you do. He's going to basically take advantage. And so they say they still want a king. So God says, okay, okay, okay. I'll give you a king. And they get Saul. Now, Saul is a whole other story for a different Sunday morning. But Saul turns out to be a very bad king. Pretty ruthless, actually. The people went against God. They rejected God. Jesus is saying this morning, it's all about the rejection of the work of the Holy Spirit that's blasphemed. I don't work against myself, he said. I do the work of God. And when you reject the work of God, you are rejecting the kingdom of God coming in. While all creation groans under trying to bring in the, the kingdom of God, you, trying to stop that, it'd be like you wanting a king. Then you're going to be oppressed He's warning us this morning to let the Spirit in. Because when you have the Spirit, you, are uni you unify with God. You're able to do the work of God in the kingdom. It's 
complicated, but not so complicated. How are we holding back the work of the kingdom in our own lives, in our country, and in the world? When God is constantly trying to renew day by day this world and to bring in the one commandment to love our neighbor, how are we trying to withhold and stop Jesus and tell him he's crazy? Tell you when you have passion about something in your life that you're crazy. Jesus didn't care what the earthly people said. He kept his eyes focused on the work of God. And as Christians this morning, that's our job to keep our sights on God. Now, I must tell you that when I help people transition to the next life, that this is clearly on their mind. And I can't explain it more to you other than that moment of reflection is how did I live my life is abundantly clear to that person. To raise ourselves up and our children, our children's children, in the faith gives us the knowledge and the strength to know, to know, to know the work of Christ in the world and our part in it. And to come to the end of our life and to hopefully hear, well done, faithful servant. This is what Jesus is talking about. Try not to stop the work of God and the Holy Spirit within you. Sometimes you just got to let go and let God. Amen. set for supper and on the wide couches where we watch TV. 
begin while we are sorting the laundry, writing out the shopping list, and in front of our bathroom mirrors. Begin in the barns among the warmth of animals and the smells of grain and manure. Begin in the growing fields and in the flooded pastures and where the rains have not come and the soil is cracked and hard. Begin in the gleaming office towers, the shiny shopping malls, the sweaty factory floors. Begin on crumbling sidewalks and amid the rumble of subways, at machines, at our desks, by the coffee makers and computers. Begin with the rich, the comfortable. Begin with the poor, the desperate, among the successful, the self-assured, among the failed and the floundering, in the glitter of the halls of power, and in the cold and shadowed corners of tragedy and defeat. Begin on a day when the sun is brilliant, on a day when the sky is gray, in a time when economies are favorable, in a time when all is rust, at the moment when leaders are caring, or amid indifference, hostility, despair. Let us begin beginning again, and whether we have begun and triumphed, or begun and struggled and faltered, we will continue our beginning as we have from our beginning at Jerusalem, which is wherever and whoever we are. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, grant you everlasting life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. All right, all right, you noodlers. Welcome to St. James, and welcome to our virtual congregation. I'm so glad you're with us this morning. If you are here for the first time, if you, you know, brave enough, put your arm up, we have a gift for you. So while Jason is 
I know we have a couple new people, no? Anyone brave enough? No? Okay. Um, I think we would love to mug you. That's what we're trying to do. So, so we're going to mug you and kiss you at the same time. Welcome to St. James. And if you would like to fill out an information card and put it in the offering plate, we can be in touch with you. Welcome to St. James. Okay, um, hospitality is in the Great Hall after this service. You're going to want to see it because it's quite spectacular today. We have disco balls up there that are kind of fun from a party event left over, but you got to go check it out. Very fun. Um, Pride Month on your bulletin, if you look in the back, page 16, you will see a lot of events happening and recommendations. I was very pleased to work with our Pride team, uh, which uh, you can see a couple, good Meg and Jackie and Robert and Gary, and we have Taylor and Brett right there. Um, they have put this wonderful program together this month for you. So you'll see a book recommendation. The book is The Prophets. Um, this is by Robert Jones Jr. Um, Kathy Lieberman and I have selected this with the Pride team. Um, it's a phenomenal novel. I highly recommend it to you. We can discuss it after Pride Month. And I'm not going to lie, this is, Kayla says this all the time, um, it's 25 pages in is difficult to get the lingo, but once you got it, it's a beautiful piece of literature. It's about two slaves that are gay. Now, we don't think of that during slavery times, but yes, there were gay people. And so this is a beautiful story. I highly recommend a read. We also have the movie Uncle Frank that was chosen for you all to watch. Highly recommend that also. The glossary of terms that we all need to know are, I believe, on page 19. Um, most especially, next week we have Joshua Vecchioni will be speaking with us in an altar side chat. He is a trans person who transitioned from female to male 44 years ago. He is exemplary. He is wonderful. I just want to give you a heads up that it will be a transformative experience for you. Please come next Sunday. After the service today, please stay. We will transition. A lot of trans today, sorry. <laughs> we will go right into a vicar's vision after the final hymn. I would ask you to please stay. I'd like to give a mid-year check-in for you if you could just remain seated for an extra maybe 15, 20 minutes. This week has been um, amazing to see how this group of people, this, the uh, LGBTQ team came together. I am more than honored to be a part of that team, but I hope you are too. In a time when the LGBTQ community is coming much more under fire and losing ground, we, the church, have been especially hard on this group of people through history. And it's a pleasure and honor to be a beacon of light at St. James for the community. Thank you as you give to this amazing ministry this morning.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Eternal God, in the abundance of your love, you have caused all things to be from dust and spirit. You have woven our humanity in all our wanderings. You never cease to call us to fullness of life. You gave us Jesus, son of Mary, the bread of life broken for the world. He fed us and feasted with us. He healed us and suffered for us. His dying and rising have set us free from the poverty of sin and the famine of death. Therefore, with all whom you have made, cherished, and called, with all who hunger for your kingdom and will not rest until all your children are fed, with the broken saints and redeemed sinners of all ages, we take up the song of your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We ask that your Holy Spirit will fall upon us and upon these gifts, that these fragile earthly things may be to us the body and blood of our Lord and brother Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was betrayed gathered with his faltering friends for a meal that tasted of freedom. Calling them to his table, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In that same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. As on that night, so here and now, he offers himself in touch and taste beyond all words can hold. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church. May we at St. James be the light of Christ for a world that is sorely in need of it. Remember all the areas of the world beset by strife, war, or disaster that your peace may dwell in those lands. Remember the poor, the sick, the hungry, the destitute, and those in prison. Remember all those who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them to the place of eternal joy and light. Therefore, in our eating and drinking, we are filled with the life-giving presence of Christ. We proclaim him as creation's host, transforming poverty into plenty in the reckless generosity of love. Inspire us with the hope that one day death and greed will, no more, will be no more and people without number will come from east and west, north and south to share the kingdom meal. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, by who and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours. Mother of blessings, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
This is the banquet of the Lamb. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. Behold what you are.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of your Son, Jesus Christ. You have redeemed us and made us your people, forgiven, loved, and freed. We are your body, your hands and feet here on earth. Ours are the eyes with which you, in the mystery of the Holy Spirit, look with compassion on a broken world. Now take us outside this holy place to the crossroads of the world. Empower us to live and love as Christ did. And give us joy as we work and wait for the final victory of eternal life. In Christ's most holy name, amen. May we who have fed at Wisdom's table take her welcome out to where tables are reserved and doors are closed. And may the Spirit drive us to break our bread on the altar of the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Open with a quick prayer, if you don't mind. The Lord be with you. Gracious God, we thank you for being able to worship you this morning. Keep our hearts and minds on your Holy Spirit as we go out into the world today. Help us to be present in this meeting and have us ears to hear and eyes to see. Amen. Well, thank you for staying a few minutes over today as I just would like to touch base with you. It's so nice to see your shining faces even though you still have masks on. Um, we've been through a lot in the last 14, 15 months and I just wanna thank you for your support and for being here and all the transitions we've had to do and pivot 
um, have paid off. I think we are probably one of uh, maybe a dozen churches um, at our level. That probably more than 50% are still closed in this diocese until after Labor Day. So uh, I think that we're a shining light, and that's because of your support. It's also partly because we had technology on our side. As early adopters in the church, we really, really um, were hugely benefited from the fact we were live streaming the service while we were back in the community center and even before in the park. So this has allowed us to grow uh, and nurture this part of our service. I talked to the uh, crew upstairs and next Sunday, we would like to invite those interested to go upstairs and see what they're doing and to see the equipment you have provided for this church. It is amazing. It also needs to grow to be able to not have feedback and things like that. But we are light years ahead of so many churches in our diocese and in our country. Thank you for that. While we have been adjusting to the pandemic, um, things have happened from forming our budget last year to today. We're halfway through the year, and I'm gonna ask you to kind of listen in to some of the issues we're facing. Um, our children's church needs help. Um, what's happening right now is Miss Sarah has resigned as of September 1 because she got her dream job and she could no longer um, you know, afford Sunday mornings. She has three small children. We understand she loves it here. She's going to continue to be here, but not in the capacity of Sunday school director. Miss Barbara, who's been faithfully serving for seven years through you know, sleet and snow, like the postman, has also said she can no longer do Sunday school, but that she would like to continue with Girls Who Code, which we would really like to develop for the community. So she will be concentrating on that. So it prompted a lot of meditation on my part and really feeling like we need to add a person to our staff, a family life minister. And we, as the Bishop's Committee met, have been discussing this, prayed about it, developed a, a wishful uh, job description, and feel that it is time because these kids are coming grown up more in the fall. We said, wait till the fall, and we have no program. I can develop one, but honestly, we need you to help us do that. So my um, proposal, if you will, and the Bishop's Committee is to add a family life minister to our staff, July 1. <laughs> We are, I am telling you, let me give you an example. Yesterday, I had not really prepared that sermon you just heard. Usually Saturdays are for that. I take a lot of time and meditate during the week. I do the exegetical work, which is the research. And I get a call, I gotta go to Hogue and give someone last rites. In the meantime, I'm working with the trans community because in your bulletin, we put pink on the background and that sent ricochets through the trans community, and we've changed it to blue next week. So, texting here. And then in the meantime, I get a call after the wedding we had here that the plumbing was <laughs> shot. And I was here till 9 o'clock last night. So this morning, yes, I'm tired. And could use some more support. I realize people are slowly coming back from COVID, but you all have to remember we, as you have 50% people, have 50% volunteer base, and we're, we're kind of wearing out our volunteer base, too. That's why we've been going with snacks at the hospitality hour. We've been trying to ramp up some of the music. We're in transition, too. So what I'm asking is for more help. So this is some of the things that St. James is so good at, is pivoting and actually looking at the future and having vision. And I would like us to remain in that capacity as the visionaries for the church, which means we have to continue, brace yourself, engaging in the technology. And you all get a text message. A lot of churches don't know how to do that. So St. James has been sharing 
our wealth of knowledge with other churches. And slowly they're coming along. Like St. Wilfred, we just did Father Charles's funeral for St. Wilfred. And Kent and the crew are working with their people to bring them up to speed. That's you all sharing your wealth. It's wonderful. And I want to thank you for that. So as we look at bringing in a family life minister, I want to leave more time for myself to concentrate on ministry and outreach and all the things that can be done to expand our reach in the community and beyond as we are spreading the word of God and trying to bring in the kingdom of God. We have had some setbacks in the tech part of it with, you know that we were going to do the flat screens up here, the larger ones. Um, the new ones coming in are July now. <laughs> Everyone said hold off because they'll be much more bright and much better and better pixels. And so we're all wired up, ready to go, but we're waiting for those to come in. Um, we also are way over budget on those. So we're kind of realigning the budget for that. As you know, things are costing more and the boats sitting out in Huntington Beach are collecting drayage fees and so they pass that on to the consumer. Um, let's see, with pride, um, you'll note the amount of work that went into it. I hope that you can tell the community to share in our celebration. It has been a wonderful experience and I hope you glean a lot off of that. Social media has expanded also. You may not see it, but we are gaining in followers on Instagram and Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we have a wonderful um, person doing that, Alex Estrada. She is now graduating from college and she wants to go into this business and I've been coaching and mentoring her on her own business. So these are things that you know truly allow us to expand our reach and it's hard to you know grasp but our you know building is out on Instagram world and being liked and it's just been a wonderful experience to work with her and to see the community kind of come along with us. We also have the partnership with St. Michael's that has been through me and I have to admit that it's been difficult because you're dealing with a you know bilingual congregation, some of them don't speak English, and the priest is so overwhelmed. The community was hit so hard, I can't even tell you um, how hard it's been hit. They had so many deaths, he wondered at one point, would he have a congregation left? Because it's in Anaheim, they're in the service industry, multi-generations living together, and so he's now telling me that they're coming out of it, and so I'm having coffee with him this week to see how we can, you know, do more in person or work together. But bearing with that, uh, it may be a little while before they're all comfortable doing that. But know that that relationship has really actually been written about in the Christian news world as a model for future churches to work together as sister congregations. So you shine there. This week... Um, I will be putting out a questionnaire to you all to hopefully see if you support this family life minister, where you're at with that, how you see our programs going, and what you would like to see in the future. Uh, you know we always plan Lent in about October. <laughs> it's coming up. So we just need some feedback from you. So those are the things that we're looking at uh, specifically. We are looking at more relevant programs, um, I think that we are looking to be more of a voice in the community, in the government. I do have more involvement in the city of Newport Beach. They ask me to pray frequently for city council. I am meeting with city council members to just kind of move things along. Um, also, just so you know, just like a little example, I was driving by, I think, on 17th or 18th Street, and this was the day of the verdict for George Floyd, uh, the police officer, and I'm driving by and there's a, like a ancillary police station on 18th or 17th. Driving by and there's a cannon outside the police station. A World War II cannon pointing out to the street. And I thought, what are they saying? So I wrote a letter to the mayor with a picture. I took a picture. And it took him a little while to get back to me. But he said, I get your point. <laughs> 
So I am working with him right now to see if we can get the cannon removed and put in a museum or a military base where it belongs. But we have to start looking at things new and through fresh eyes on every spectrum of our society. And that's why I just want to encourage you to kind of, as we come out of COVID, open your eyesight and your heart to what really matters. So I want to open it up. I'm sure I haven't covered everything, but if you have any questions on where we are or where we're going, or if you just want to yell at me, that's fine too. <laughs> any questions? Yes, Tony. What do I see as changes with the government opening up next week? Uh, we have a very conservative bishop, people. Um, he wants us to remain pretty much as we are until after Labor Day in the yellow tier. Now, he has pivoted to when he has seen widespread change, but that's why we're not doing any parties or having big gatherings as we've been asked to wait till after Labor Day, and then he'll reassess it. Um, frankly, the... Things where some of the things we're doing are a little, I'm pushing toward the edge. Uh, for instance, communion is really just supposed to be bread, but I feel that and one of the theological issues he has for just bread is that we are a common cup people. And the, you know, there's something to be said about those individual. It's reinforcing the individuality in society instead of the community of the faithful. That's the theology. I think you're big enough and grown up enough to get that. Right now, COVID, we're doing separate cups. So I think things will ease up June 15th for the world. We're still wearing masks. We still can't sing. You'll notice that we're putting music into the bulletin again, the actual notes. We're starting the Nicene Creed. We thought we would try singing it because it gets kind of rote. You know, we're just saying it every week, kind of flatline. But now you're hearing it, you're seeing it, and so when we can sing, you'll know the words and you'll know the tune, it'll be in your mind. So we are progressing slowly. You're like frogs in a frying pan, you may not know it, but the bathrooms don't have tape on it. Well, they're closed right now, but. <laughs> yeah. um, but we're, you know, gradually, we're passing the plate, for instance. Uh, eventually, I'd like it so you can come back to the altar and kneel. But these are things I'm adding gradually. And we're out of practice. And you notice we have one acolyte instead of three. The kids aren't back yet. The parents are a little reticent yet. So we're trying to train up new acolytes. We're, we're doing everything we can. Sunday school is right now, children, family ministry is our Achilles heel. I really feel it's time to bring on someone young, um, to bring in that family youth aspect of our congregation. We're pivoting on how we finance that, but it can be done with your support. Does that answer your question? Thank you. But anyway, I just think it's going to be a gradual... We, are, we have scheduled Messiah concert for December 5th, we are like shooting for a Messiah concert, which would mean, you know, 20 voices singing up here. So we're gambling on that. That may have to be canceled, but we're scheduling it. By then, I think we can sing. Christmas Eve, I think we can do a children's pageant. We'll just see how it goes. I have a lot of optimism. With the technology, they're already pivoting on the COVID vaccine for the for the. Uh, Hybrids, what do you call it? Yeah, that would be it. Yes? Do you have anybody in mind for this family? Hmm, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Technically, yes. Uh, Jeremy Brock up here as your sound engineer is a licensed minister. And uh, we have been working with Jeremy for actually two years in spiritual direction. Father uh, Richard and I have felt a long time call on his life and so we would like to bring him on and we've talked to him about it and uh, there's a process with being a mission congregation is to bring it to you I've brought it to the bishop 
and you know we're not trying to jump ahead, but you know you have to develop a job description. You have someone in mind. I wanted to talk to you, and tomorrow at four o'clock we talk. Jeremy and I talk to the bishop. So we'll see how that goes. I pray that he's great with it, but you have to remember there's been some issues with you know the bishop that, as you well know, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll be very positive. He seems to be positive about it and supportive. Yes. I can't hear you, Darren. Can you take off your mask for a second? Yes. That, well, that's going to be up to our new family minister, right? I have an idea that I've thrown by is that what if the dads came in and taught Sunday school? Yes. <laughs> what if the dads of the young kids taught once every six weeks? And um, they, we have a lesson plan, and they, they teach it, and then they can bring in their kind of life skills and teach the kids. Remember, I think I told you three or four years ago that the parents came to me and said, you know, David and Goliath is way too violent. But we would like them to be taught about bullying. They could be, you know, the, the lesson can be given, but let's not go into the cutting off the head and, you know, slaying blah, blah, blah. But the idea of the Christian faith, how we talk about bullying and what we do about that. So we need someone progressive in that position. And yes, we would need Sunday school teachers. I don't expect the family life minister, which we've kind of coined next gen pastor. Um, I don't see that person going and sitting down with the kids on the floor and, you know, romper rooming. I see them directing the family life of this church. And me hopefully keeping on with visioning and being more with you all and being with the, the community at large. Does that make sense? Okay. Good question, Darren. Anything else? Oh, dual. <laughs> Great question. So they have acknowledged that they've received it, and that's good, you know. <laughs> We made sure by the absolute drop-dead date that we got an email back saying they received it. So I expect that the standing committee and the corporation, all the different levels, secretary of convention are looking at it. But we have, the, on the back side, three months in, let's say, so you have like halfway point, six months before convention. We're supposed to meet with the standing committee. We're supposed to meet with the commission on ministry. It's a, again, a process. And we, we're doing everything we can. We're following up. Let's put it this way. I didn't get a flat no. So I think it's, they're kind of wondering what to do. Good question. Anything else? Good? You sure? Okay. Well, if you all stand, I'll dismiss you. The last page of your bulletin. Our worship and meeting has ended. Our service in the world now begins. Go into your own neighborhoods. Go to unknown lands and places. Go where God's name is well known and where it is yet to be discovered. Go to those who welcome you and to those who reject you. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. That's your thanks be to God? Okay. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you, people. All very fun.